Well, I define feminist art as images and visualizations and actions which readdress the suppression, the marginalization, and the denigration of works made by women for, uh, for me, for over a thousand years. That's the repression that I've been addressing. And that's the degree of disappearance that has always engaged me. So feminist art is the compensation and the revitalization of being able to look at the variousness and the richness of the history and the contemporary work of women artists. The physical action in Curie's role began as uh, a dream drawing between waking and sleeping that sensitive uh, aesthetic space where I woke up with an image of uh, a woman, her leg up, extracting a scroll from her vagina. And there's a little statement with it, like a comic book that said, interior knowledge. So I drew this very roughly on a piece of paper and wondered, well, I'm not sure what this means, so I put it away. And the next thing I knew, I was folding these strips of paper into an origami, and then I was figuring out, well, how could I insert and make it a very smooth, elegant strip of information? So the original dream of information from within, knowledge from within, could manifest itself. So I was doing that, and my sweetheart was helping me. We were typing these little three words or a statement across the text, and with a special family recipe, discovering how to put a thin strip of text so that it would be a smooth extraction without breaking up or crumbling or fading away. So there is a, a recipe secret. Anyway, without wanting to do it, I suddenly found myself in some kind of trance, covering myself with local mud, on a table standing in front of the feminist audience, which was mixed men and women, and, and I had you no know, position to scroll. And I began the statement and reading it as an extraction. So, 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 so. Um, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know if this was significant. The audience was kind of stunned. But some men came up to me and said, this has helped me so much. I finally understand the ticker tape. It was a Wall Street banker. I understand my ticker tape. A uh, woman said, uh, I understand the, the birth connection, but other people were enraged and confused and said, this is just playing into old male fantasies. As usual with my work, I was not sure, but gradually I began to think, yeah, this did enter a taboo and forbidden area where information about the body entered a second concept of speaking, and that we needed this interiority as uh, a spoken concept. For better or worse, the representation in Brooklyn is only one frozen image. So it's not really about the process or the text that, uh, you know, provoked the imagery. And so I think it's hard to understand the full dynamic of the work just looking at that one extracted image, which is one of the problems of our culture, is that we get one reference rather than the more subtle conceptual risk and uncertainty around it. As an artist, I have to be happy that at least one work is in this museum collection. But also as an artist, I'm uh, discomforted that it's not deeper in its context. Well, the information that I wanted to bring forward on the scroll, which involved very painstaking typing on the little scroll, like three words across, because I wanted it to be delicate and comfortable to extract. So the message, I had two messages. One was titled, Be Prepared. It's an early 
when he quoted from this statement, be prepared to be misunderstood, to be ripped off, to have all your work confused and denigrated. And then the second statement, which is the one that's known with this role, was, I met a happy man, a structurist filmmaker, but don't call me that, it's something else I do. This was posited on the fact that a very important woman film historian had written about other women's films, but had never written about mine. And that was always distressing. Finally, we were, we were at a conference together. I thought, now she's really going to have to see my film. I'll schedule in the morning and she will attend. And as soon as my films were over, the door opened, and the film historian entered. She had missed my films once again. So in behind me, in a row behind me, were graduate students. I turned around and I said, what do you think? I'm so upset. Here she is. She hasn't seen my films yet again. And they said, there are certain films she cannot look at. The hand-touched sensibility, the diaristic indulgence, the painterly mess. So all those statements in the scroll were from the graduate students of a woman historian who had never looked at my films.